protein is one of the most essential tools to help you achieve a weight loss and body recomposition goal. So today I'm sharing the top 10 best high protein foods to help you tap into fat burning and achieve your weight loss goal. Now if you're new here, my name's Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's in nutrition, human performance. On my channel, I teach you the science back tips to help you achieve your weight loss and wellness goals. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe. Okay, so the first one is the humble egg. Now each egg isn't actually particularly very high in protein, only has about six grams per egg. So you do need to eat quite a bit of eggs <laughs> in order to get all your protein needs. Eggs are really great for weight loss goal because it contains both protein and fat. So I usually like to eat three eggs and pair it with a little bit of cheese to help boost the protein content a little bit more. But there's actually been multiple studies that have found that when you eat eggs for breakfast versus some other types of breakfast foods like cereal, that the eggs help people feel more full for longer. So these are some eggs that my friend gave me from her chickens, little Easter egg -er eggs, I think. But also eggs are relatively inexpensive, really easy to make and extremely versatile. Okay, the second one is salmon and I just got my meat delivery today. So let's see if I can find it in the bottom of my freezer. Oh, here it is. <laughs> I actually recently had to learn how to love salmon because I didn't really like it, <laughs> but I found some ways to cook it that I do kind of like it now. And I'm happy about that because three ounces of cooked salmon has about 22 grams of protein, but it also is rich in omega-3 fatty acids that are an anti-inflammatory. It's also what's called a high diaz protein, which means you really readily absorb it and your body can really easily use that protein as protein within the body. So as a good rule of thumb, you wanna aim for proteins that have a diaz score of one or higher. This means that it's completely absorbed. This can be tricky for plant-based proteins, but we'll get into that in a second. Now, something unique to salmon is that it's really rich in selenium and selenium is required for phase two liver detox. So not only do you get a lot of protein with just a bit of salmon, you also get a lot of selenium and anti-inflammatory omega-3 fats. Okay, so the next is whey protein. And I've been talking to you guys a lot about my protein powder. It's coming soon. I have my little sample pack <laughs> right here that I've been that I've been using, this is the chocolate one, so good. Now for a long time, whey protein was really just seen as the protein for athletes, but there are a lot of other health benefits to whey protein other than just being a really high diaz protein. In fact, it's one of the highest diaz proteins other than eggs. Now being studied for a lot of other health perks, including weight loss. But also unique to whey protein is that it's really high in an amino acid called cysteine. Cysteine is also required for that phase two liver detox. And I've developed my own zero sugar whey protein. This has been in the works for a very long time and we're really, really close to releasing it. So if you guys wanna stay in the loop on when my zero sugar whey protein will be released, you can subscribe to my free weekly newsletter down description below. Okay, so next we have beef. Now beef is also a high diet protein and it has obviously a ton of different cuts, but my favorite is ground beef because it is so versatile and it tends to be really budget friendly. And three ounces of cooked beef has around 22 grams of protein and it's so easy to use. I tend to go for the 8515. That way it has just a little bit more fat and helps to boost satiety from both protein and fat. But I'll use ground beef in tacos, in my homemade zucchini bolognese, my homemade zucchini lasagna as well. Oh my gosh, that recipe is so good. Back to my freezer full of protein. Now the next, is chicken and really any type of poultry. But chicken is probably one most people are using, maybe the other one being a bit of turkey as well. So I bone in thighs here, but any cut can work. Because chicken tends to be more lean, it is going to be a little bit higher in protein and a little bit lower in fat. So because of that, if you really struggle with satiety, you might want to cook your chicken in a little bit extra of butter or olive oil or pair it with avocado. So you can make up for that slightly lower fat and make sure that you're satisfied and prevent cravings. And about three ounces of cooked chicken rest will have around 27, 28 grams of protein. So it is pretty packed with protein and also high diaz. Okay, now to the fridge, I have full fat Greek yogurt. So you guys know that I make my own Greek yogurt. It's honestly so easy and saves so much money, especially right now where Greek yogurt is like $10 for one of those larger containers, at least for a full fat grass fed option. Anyway, that's like a whole other different video. I share my step-by-step -step strategy on how to make Greek yogurt. I'll have that link down description below because honestly, it's so easy. Take like minimal effort and it will save you, saves me like at least $500 a year because we use a lot of Greek yogurt. And I know what you're thinking, full fat, isn't that like not good for you? <laughs> but there's actually been a lot of research lately specifically on full fat dairy products and how it can be preventative against obesity. And what the researchers are saying is that it's likely because of both the fat as well as the protein that's in 
Greek yogurt or other full fat dairy products. So both of those combined help you to feel really satiated, really satisfied while having a really high diaz protein. So it can help to prevent cravings for foods that might work against your goals. I love using Greek yogurt in my smoothies as a Greek yogurt bowl or even stirred into chia pudding to help boost the protein content. And just one cup of Greek yogurt will give you about 20 grams of protein. So pretty great. Okay, so one of the best options for plant-based proteins are going to be fermented soy products. Now I specifically recommend fermented soy products if you're going to use soy as a protein source because it helps to break down some of the anti-nutrients of soy. But soy is one of the highest diaz proteins that you'll be able to get your hands on from a plant-based source. It's going to be about 0.9. So remember, we ideally want a score of one or higher for diaz. So soy is going to be a little low. Really the only plant-based protein that has a score of one is going to be potato protein, but there's not a lot of potato protein powders on the market right now. And if you eat just potatoes, you're also going to be eating a lot of starch. So it's not really helpful for a weight loss goal. So from a plant-based perspective, the highest quality protein source will be something called tempeh. And you can use this in a lot of similar ways that you would ground meat. Like you can chop it up and make ground tempeh tacos, add it into a stir fry. Really, there's a lot of easy ways to use tempeh. Okay, so another one is pork. And I actually don't talk a lot about pork on my channel, mostly because I didn't grow up eating it. So I'm not used to eating it that often, but it actually is a good high quality protein source. It's going to have a diet score above one. Really all animal based proteins are going to have a high diet score other than collagen. Collagen is not a complete protein. I wouldn't recommend using it as a complete protein, but it is great to be pairing with complete protein sources. So common cut for pork is going to be like pork tenderloin and about three ounces cooked is going to have roughly 24 grams of complete protein. Okay, so for one of my absolute favorite proteins, ow, just hit my elbow. <laughs> we have cottage cheese. In fact, this is actually what I'm going to be breaking my fast with in just a second. I love cottage cheese. I know people either love it or absolutely hate it. My husband absolutely hates it. I absolutely love it, but it's really rich in protein. Just about one cup will have anywhere between 24 to 28 grams of protein. That's a lot with just one cup. It's also going to be a full fat dairy product. So it has a lot of the same perks as Greek yogurt. Just make sure that you check the ingredients and that you're not getting something that has any added sugar. Got some peanut butter on there. Obviously that's how I eat mine. <laughs> So you will see some sugars if you look at the nutrition facts, but as long as it's not added sugar, that's okay. Cause that's mostly just going to be a little bit of the lactose. And if the cottage cheese has been fermented, a lot of that isn't actually true lactose anymore. So I like to make like cottage cheese bowls. My favorite way is to heat up some blueberries, just on the stove top, melt up some frozen blueberries a bit, put that on top of some peanut butter within my cottage cheese and it all just kind of like melts together and it's so good, oh my gosh. But you can also do a more savory option where you add like cucumbers and tomatoes and some black pepper. My mom loves pairing it with avocado as well and requires zero prep. You don't have to cook it or anything. You can bring this with you on the go, so easy. Okay, so the last one on my list is anchovy and sardines. I actually bought these a long time ago, hoping that I could make myself try and like it. I don't even know if this is still good. Where's the expiration date? I'm sure it is. Yeah, it's still good. Got like two years on this thing since it's canned. <laughs> but man, if you like anchovies or sardines, eat them. <laughs> they are so good for you. So you can see like advertise on this. It's talking about the omega-3 fatty acids. And that's because fatty fish like sardines or anchovies are going to be really rich in omega-3 fats. And there's one meta-analysis where they looked at a bunch of studies and found that fish oil can actually help to reduce abdominal fat. So belly fat specifically. So not only do you get protein, which is really important for body recomposition, you also get the beneficial omega-3 fats or the fish oil. If you like it, let me know how you make it <laughs> so I can try to learn to love it as well. All of these protein sources are really great proteins, but you need to know how much of it you need to eat per day. So make sure you calculate how much you need per day with my really simple, easy calculation right here. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come on, new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.